Motion of a projectile refers to the free throw motion of an object that is given an initial velocity at a certain angle. Once in the air, we can assume that the object is only subjected to the gravitational force, just like in the free fall motion, and therefore only experiences a constant downward acceleration of 9.81 meter per second squared in the SI unit system, or 32.2 foot per second squared in the U.S. customary system. Since there is no other acceleration, the motion can only happen within a 2D plane defined by its initial velocity, and therefore let's derive a general strategy when dealing with motions of a projectile. Here, this object is given an initial velocity, and the path of the motion of the projectile is shown. Let's put this path in a 2D rectangular coordinate system. For convenience, the x-axis is always chosen as parallel to the horizon. The origin can be arbitrary. The object has an initial position x0, y0, and its initial velocity can be resolved into the two components accordingly, v0x and v0y. At a given time during this motion, t, this object has reached a new point with position com components x and y, and it has a new velocity with velocity components vx and vy. And we wish to derive formulas that enable us to find the object's new position and a new velocity. Don't forget, as we already mentioned, there is only a constant acceleration g in the negative y direction, and no acceleration in the horizontal direction. Therefore, along the vertical and horizontal direction respectively, the equations of rectilinear motion with constant acceleration apply. So for the horizontal motion with acceleration of zero, the new horizontal position is determined by the initial horizontal position x0 plus the initial horizontal velocity v0x times t and the horizontal velocity remains unchanged, v0x. For the vertical motion, since the acceleration is a constant negative g, we substitute ac equals to negative g into the equations for rectilinear motion with constant accelerations and get this set of equations. Don't forget, the horizontal motion and the vertical motion always take place during the same time period. This is an important piece of information. Let's look at this example. The path of the motion of this projectile is shown. And if it has an initial velocity of 30 meter per second and the direction is perpendicular to the slope, we are asked to determine the distance d. We first put this entire system into an xy coordinate system, x-axis chosen to be parallel to the horizon, and the origin conveniently chosen to be the initial position of this object. Therefore, its initial position simply is 0, 0. And then we want to resolve its initial velocity into the x and y components using trigonometry. Again, using trigonometry, we can determine that the new horizontal position is d times cosine 30 degree, and the new vertical position is negative d times sine 30 degree, negative sine because it is below the x-axis. Therefore, according to the two formulas we derived earlier for the horizontal position and the vertical position, we have two equations with two unknowns, d and t, so we can solve both unknowns simultaneously to be t equals to 7.06 seconds and d equals to 122 meter. And this d here is the answer we're looking for. Alternatively, some students prefer to rotate this entire system and set up the xy coordinate system this way with the x-axis superimposing with the slope. Don't forget now, the horizon is at an angle with our system. Therefore, the acceleration of gravity is still perpendicular to the horizon, 
and the acceleration needs to be resolved into the x and y direction. So you will have two constant accelerations along the x direction and y direction respectively. And along each direction, this equation for rectilinear motion with constant acceleration applies. And the advantage of using this method is that along the y direction now, the final position is also zero. Therefore, from this equation alone, you can solve for the time to be 7.06 seconds instead of having to solve a system of equations simultaneously. And then if you plug this information into the equation for the x direction motion, you can solve for the distance directly from this equation to be 122 meter, which is the same as the previous answer. So just an alternative way to solve the same problem, and it is up to you to decide which one you prefer.